And then our final section is the rumor mill. As per usual, we have new evidence that the Silver Surfer situation might not be exactly what we were thinking. Yellowstone series proper might not be ending after season five. And Josh Brolin might be jumping ship from Marvel to DC. And then we've got a few more things to talk Thank about. That's classified. Hello nerds, and welcome to the Rumor Mill. You have found the appropriate cheat code to get to the news before it becomes news. Here, we will discuss rumors in the pop culture and nerdy realm of things. Then we will discuss the probability that those rumors are legitimate. And then finally, probably a little bit of my own personal speculation. If you want the more concrete news that has already become news, then there is a full news show over on the main channel called The Week in Nerddom, which you can find linked down in the description as well as at the end of this video. Now, let's see what all of those rumor mongers have to say and which of them are just plain full of poop. Subscribe. That is all. So, we start off the rumor mill with confirmations and refutations. We actually have one of each this time. The first one is an interesting situation. It's a refutation, but it's we're refuting something that we actually didn't cover on the channel because it came out and then was squashed between episodes. So, we're just getting the aftermath here, as happens from time to time. But there was a rumor that there was going to be a The Batman video game based on the, the Robert Pattinson version of the character and that whole universe, that whole Matt Reeves universe. Well, it has been made known by James Gunn in no uncertain terms that that is not in fact happening. So no, we will not be seeing Robert Pattinson's likeness in a video game representing the Dark Knight anytime soon. That is a little bit of a relief for some of us. And then our confirmation this week, we now have Sigourney Reaver confirming that she is, in fact, going to be in the Mandalorian and Grogu movie. She has not said, no, I'm sure she's not allowed to say, exactly what part she's playing in said movie, but she has said that she has been cast to play a part in the Mandalorian and Grogu movie. So, pretty freaking interesting there. I'm pretty sure, I, I honestly didn't have the time to go back and check what we said initially, but I'm pretty sure that one was favorable. I, I, I'm... I feel like that one I gave at least more than 50% likely that it was going to be happening. So I was right, I guess. <laughs> That's what we got though for confirmation refutations. We don't have any more new, any new sources this week for old rumors. We only have new rumors. And one of the rumors here is going to be familiar but not a new source for the same rumor. This is a brand new rumor covering similar ground. So that's gonna be the last one we get to. We'll get to it eventually. Uh, starting things off in this section though, we have Predator Badlands, the sequel to the Predator Prey movie that came out on Hulu. Yes, on Hulu, uh, that did fairly well. The sequel now seems like it's borrowing rather heavily from Star Wars. There was a leak and leaks are rumors until they are confirmed to be true because a lot of times people will release things and say, oh, it's a leak, I found this over and it was just laying in the corner at the Disney Studios. Yeah, no, that's not how, that's, that's we we wait for confirmation before it becomes anything more than rumor. So the, the leak says that there was a casting call obtained and the casting call laid out a very similar situation for the lead actors for this movie. They're, it's The casting call says, according to the leak, says that they're looking for two girls, two women, to play the role of two sisters, Tia and Tessa. These two sisters began their lives together, or I'm sorry, began their lives apart and are taking different sides of a conflict and that conflict will then put them together and they will have to be you know on the opposite sides and battling each other it sounds kind of like a certain star wars show that just got canceled so that's weird i i mean the broad strokes that's very much the acolyte but i'm sure the 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 fine details that we're going to be getting in here is what's going to really set it apart i mean maybe they want to try their hand at telling a better version of that story hopefully <laughs> but yeah as it stands right now like there's this sounds like it was sourced appropriately and i'm honestly going to be giving this is kind of a benefit of the doubt just because it seems like 
something Disney might be trying to do right now. So we're gonna say it because Disney owns Fox, who owns Predator and Hulu is where this is probably gonna go. It's 80% likely that this is the situation. I will be very surprised if at the very least we don't get these super broad strokes. Again, the, the finer details that the, the leak definitely goes into greater detail than I just gave you, but if you want to go if you want to go find it do that that's fine but really the takeaway from this is broad strokes this sounds like the acolyte it's not going to end up that way but if it if those broad strokes aren't there i'll be very very surprised next up we have fantastic four this is the one i think that is going to give the most nerd hope this episode fantastic four there has been a couple of leaked images from the set of fantastic four no we're not talking about the ben Grimm images there's a situation there i wanted to cover it but i, I honestly couldn't find the image literally until like yesterday that everyone was talking about i found a couple of blurred out ones but that's not going to do anyone any good either way there's ben Grimm pictures on set that look really cool like definitely look like they're going to be adding to a suit so there's going to be a mix of practical and digital effects to make ben Grimm come to life and i'm super excited about that it's not what we're talking about though what we are talking about is no frankie ray as played by julia garner we know that is happening but the previous leak has said, and previous, this is all but confirmed by the, the, the trades. And remember, we've talked in the past about the fact that when the trades cover it, it's basically a confirmation of the thing being true. But they still get things wrong. And I think that is the situation that we've got here because the image, though again, very, very blurry, you should be seeing it on your screen right about now. Uh, the image appears to show us Julia Garner as Frankie Ray. If you remember, Frankie Ray was a Nova in the comic books and then at one point also became Silver Surfer, who was the Herald of Four Galactus. The other role that Frankie Ray served, or the other, there was another time, I guess I should reword that. The other time that Frankie Ray served as the Herald of Galactus, she was Frankie Ray Nova which is a different character than Silver Surfer. There's, there's different aspects to that character that, that seem to be represented in this picture. Again, super freaking blurry because it was probably shot from like a two miles away or something. So, you know, you, they had to blow it up a million times and so you can't really make out details, but it definitely does imply that we're going to be seeing Frankie Ray Nova as the Herald for Galactus and not Frankie Ray Silver Surfer as the Herald for Galactus, which is slightly more what the expectation would be for this movie. Because in the comic books, Frankie Ray as Herald for Galactus was only Silver Surfer for one very short arc, but was Herald for Galactus as Nova for much longer. And so if you're doing Silver Surfer, the fandom is going to expect Norrin Rad and not Frankie Ray. So this could be going a long way in restoring some faith in this movie for the fan base. Uh, the likelihood that this is the situation, I think is slim, but still positive. So we're gonna say about 65% because the sources that have sourced this have a decent track record, but also the image seems, again, very blurry, blurry image, but still seems to imply this thing. So, I mean, if, it, if you're playing with colors, that's the big implication here is you have a lot of orange where there should be silver if, you know, surfer and whatnot. So again, 65% likely that we're seeing Frankie Ray Nova and not Frankie Ray Silver Surfer. From there, we have Yellowstone, a, a Yellowstone rumor that we need to address. There seems to be an implication that the current, and take that back a little bit, there is there was an announcement that season five would be the end of what we know of as Yellowstone. And they we're going to just have all of these spinoff shows, which the Madison is going to be the proper sequel series to the Yellowstone series proper. Kelly Riley and Cole Hauser, who play Beth and Rip respectively, are now in negotiations to continue the mainline story without Kevin Costner. They'll just shift the focus to Beth and Rip 
and and you know Kevin Costner will be gone, and and I can't remember the actor who plays the other brother or the two brothers. I can't remember either of those actors right now, but presumably the one brother will stick around in the periphery, and then the other brother will probably be dead by the end of season five. I'm not gonna lie, there's a very strong chance that that she's gonna kill her stepbrother. Anyway, so it seems that they are not going to be part of the Madison, at least not as recurring roles or as any sort of supporting cast. They're the, the, the rumor is that they're going to be continuing the mainline story into a sixth season at least. This seems very possible. I think that uh, Taylor Sheridan realizes that this is kind of a money printing machine, Yellowstone, and, and Paramount Plus also is like, I mean, you're selling a lot of subscriptions for us because this is one of the highest rated and arguably best shows in live action right now. Let's find a way to continue it. So if we can't get Kevin Costner to come back, then maybe we can shift it over to one of the kids. And that seems to be the way it's going. So we're gonna say 75% likely we will see a Kevin costner list season six for Yellowstone. Let's move on now into the Green Lantern. Green Lantern, big rumor here, with questionable sources, big rumor here is that Josh Brolin is going to be cast as Hal Jordan in the uh, DCU version of the Green Lantern, or Lanterns, if you will, the, the series that's supposed to be going to Max. I mean, there's, there's really nothing to support this, aside from the quote-unquote leak mon rumor monger who is talking about it. Josh Brolin has a lot on his plate. You've got Outer Range, you've got potentially coming back as Thanos, which wouldn't be a huge undertaking because it would largely be voice work, which you could knock out in a day or two. And beyond, I mean, he could come back as Cable as well. There's also that possibility, but what's the likelihood that he's going to be coming back for an extended amount of time to the MCU for either of those. He does though, like I said, have Outer Range on his plate. He has a couple other projects that I believe on his plate. So it seems unlikely. And then you get into the sourcing for this one and it becomes much more unlikely that he is going to be cast in the DCU for really anything in the, in the first few outings that they go, because you can't say movies because they're doing shows too, but the first few outings, they're going to cast him in anything. If, if they go with him for anything at all, because at this point, Brolin's a little bit older, which I think is where this rumor is coming from because Hal Jordan in the Lanterns series is being billed as an older, more grizzled veteran of the Force who's training different, uh, I believe it was Jon Stewart is the other Lantern that they're, that they're going with for Lanterns. Uh, so we're going to say about 50% likely here because there is, I think, enough on the other side to say yes. I just don't think it's enough to outweigh entirely really anything on the no side of things. So we're gonna split the difference and say about 50% likely. And then we have kind of related to that, we have a Booster Gold rumor saying that Kumail Nanjiani has been cast for Booster Gold. I honestly, this one sounded familiar, so it's entirely possible we've talked about it before on the on the rumor mill, so we're not gonna spend too much time here. Kind of the similar thing, though Kumail Nanjiani has less on his plate these days. Uh, also, we're never gonna see that anything from the Eternals again, so the likelihood of him coming back to the MCU seems pretty slim. So theoretically, I could go higher on this one, but I, I just, it just, the source is just bad. It's just a bad source. So 50% likely for Kumail Nanjiani to play Booster Gold in the DCU as well. All right, nerds, let's be honest. We all have a caffeine addiction. Well, maybe not all of us, but a large number of us have a bit of a caffeine addiction. We like to drink the energy drinks. It helps with the gaming, it helps with the focus for those of us with the ADHD. And it just kind of generally keeps us pepped up while we're, you know, doing the things we need to do, i.e. work, etc., etc. So with the price of energy drinks kind of going through the roof. I, I literally was at the gas station just the other day and some of my favorite energy drinks, I haven't really purchased them for a while, but some of my favorite energy drinks were over $4 a can. And the reason I haven't purchased them for a while, A, is because they're getting more expensive, but B, because we have a channel partnership. It's not really a sponsorship, it's a partnership. So I get a little bit of a kickback if you buy stuff by following the link down in the description. 
but Dubby has been doing a lot as far as my pocketbook is concerned, but also as far as the quality of caffeine that I'm consuming while drinking my energy drinks. Because Dubby is an energy drink, but it's a little bit more than just caffeine. I say a little bit more, but let's go through some of these other ingredients besides the caffeine. Also of note about the caffeine though, before we get into the other things, is that it's the caffeine is not synthesized caffeine. So it, it, it's a little bit slower to absorb, so it lasts a little bit longer, which also means you don't have as much of a crash. The caffeine comes from coffee fruit extract, so that is a, a, an, an actual source of caffeine. It's not synthesized caffeine, which is the better way to get caffeine. You don't want synthesized if you can, get, if you can avoid it. But we have, we have L-taurine, L-tyrosine, L-glutamate, the L-citrulline, all of these things are nootropics. They help your brain with function. The caffeine helps, especially again, if you have the ADHD, stimulants help you with focus, but also these other vitamins in here are what's going to help you a little bit more with focus and, and things of that nature. Now, it is not meant to diagnose or treat any sort of situation. This is not medical advice because I am not a doctor. The guys who make the bee drinks are not doctors either, but these things have been shown to help with that kind of stuff. Do your own research. Talk to your personal physician if you have any questions along those lines, or you know, just generally speaking, if you have any health concerns, it's probably something that you should take upon yourself. But this is one of the better money options as well, because the average that this breaks down to is approximately a dollar thirty or so per drink that you mix with the with the powder. So compare that to four dollars roughly for a can of the other stuff and you you're, you see pretty quickly how much money you can save by drinking this versus that if you follow the link down in the description you use the code generally nerdy at checkout you will get 10 percent off of your entire purchase they did also just roll out cans Something to note though on the cans they're not quite as cheap as the tubs because it's not the powder they're pre-made obviously but they are still a little bit cheaper than that $4 price tag. Approximately $3 a can if you buy the cans. And I'm pretty excited about the cans, I'm not gonna lie. I just haven't bought any yet, so I don't know what they taste like. Either way, Dubby partnered with the channel. Thank you very much, Dubby. Go check out Dubby for yourself. And until then, let's get back to the show, shall we, nerds? And then we have another big Mortal Kombat leak. Oh boy. Oh, these are so, there's so much to these too. Like, it's like they're just shoving as much garbage out there to see if any of it lands. So we're gonna break this one down like we did the one from last week. We're going to go through the individual elements of this rumor a little bit more individually than we did last week just because this technically comes from the same source as last week, so that already kind of kills a lot of this, but some of it is is repeating. Uh, we'll just, we'll get into it. All right, so Mortal Kombat 1, we have a new leak suggesting that Combat Pack 3, again, that's the big thing that everybody's talking about because by and large, Combat Pack 2 is known at this point. So Combat Pack 3, uh, the, the rumor this time is it's going to be larger. It's going to be, in fact, eight characters, so four Mortal Kombat characters and four guest characters, plus another three, I believe. One, two, three, four. So four also cameo characters are going to launch. It's fe featuring the first guest cameo character. We'll get to all that. So this leak suggests that the four Mortal Kombat characters are going to be Cabal, Jade, Scarlet, and Blaze. So those four characters. All right, so right out the gate, we already know four and four is not how Netherrealm has done things in the past. It's very not likely that they're going to start doing it th that way in the future. Honestly, the more likely option, if they really wanted to sell this as a legitimate leak, quote unquote, would be if they cut it back somehow. If they scaled back two and two, but four and four is excessive. So right out of the gate, we already know that this person's not playing with a full deck. But so Cabal, Jade, Scarlet, and Blaze. Cabal, 
there is there is no implication i don't even know if there is really any reference to cabal in the game even a passing reference or like if he there's a there's a reference to night wolf and aaron black in the test your might situation where if you mess up your test your might and you die because it's how they do it in this game then you potentially could get a green arrow ostensibly from night wolf or you could get shot and there's a comment made by the voice actor who did Aaron Black. So there are references to Nightwolf and Aaron Black. There is nothing like that for Cabal. So for them to bring him in as a fully playable character is somebody's fan fiction. We're going to say 10% likely that Cabal is going to find his way into Mortal Kombat 1, at least for Combat Pack 3. Should they continue to support this game like they keep saying they're going to, that definitely leaves the door open in Combat Pack 4, should such, such a thing exist, that it will happen. But as it stands right now, 10% likely we're looking at it for 3. And then Jade is one that has been data mined a number of times at this point. She's actively referenced in the game. We talked about her last week. I will be very surprised if we don't get a, a version of Jade in this game by the time Combat Pack 3 rolls around because I do believe we will at least get a third combat pack for Mortal Kombat 1. So 90% likely we will be seeing Jade there. Scarlet is an interesting situation. Over the weekend, I definitely saw a, a render for Scarlet that I thought was an in-game render for Mortal Kombat 1, which looked really good. Uh, it was just a fan-made render, though, that was somebody was posting for... They wanted to do the ninjas, and so they did Scarlet, Melina, and Katana together. And it was it's really cool. I'll see if I can find the image and put it up on screen for if, if, so you know what I'm talking about. But again, this is another situation where there's no passing references to Scarlet, there's no active references to Scarlet, there's no reason to believe that Scarlet has anything to do with this story, at least as it stands right now. Theoretically, could the Chaos Reigns DLC open that door up? Sure. But we already know she's not going to be part of Combat Pack 2, which is going to be Chaos Reigns. So Combat Pack 3, it, this is super, super heavily dependent on advancing the story to a point where Scarlet makes sense. And then, yeah, we might see her. So there's a lot going against this. And again, because there's no passing references to this character, we're gonna say about 30% likely that Scarlet's gonna be in. It's not super likely, but there is still a slim chance. And then Blaze, oh, Blaze. N no, I just I just want to say absolutely not. 5% likely that Blaze is gonna be in here. Blaze is, from a lore standpoint, Blaze served a purpose for rebooting the franchise. I don't think we're back to that point again in a single game, sorry. Also, I don't know if they're going to, if they will be reintroducing that character into this new timeline, if it's going to be anytime soon, because you really have to play up a lot of elements from the lore in order to make Blaze make sense. Again, theoretically, that could happen with Chaos Reigns. More likely, though, if there is a second story DLC, that is what it's going to take in order to in in introduce enough elements to make Blaze be a thing in the story. So, yeah, there is there, there are so many hurdles. And also, not a super popular... Like, yeah, he's got a little bit of a fan base inside of the Mortal Kombat fan base at large, but a little bit being operative word here. Uh, so... 5% likely we will be seeing Blaze in Mortal Kombat 1. Just, I really will be very, very surprised if that happens. So from there, let's go into the the guest characters that are rumored in this leak. <laughs> guest, oh man, guest characters. Uh, once again, we have Doom Guy, Ash Williams, Michael Myers, and Fulgore listed as potential guest characters. Fulgore from Kill Killer Instinct. <laughs> so we'll, we'll break these, these individually as well. We have Doom Guy and Ash Williams are both, I'm gonna say both, 10% not super likely. Ash Williams was a, was a rights thing. It's why we didn't get into Mortal Kombat 11. With that being dead in Mortal Kombat 11, I can't imagine they're going to try and revive of Mortal Kombat 1. They're just going to let sleeping dogs lie and go with that. Doom Guy, again, there's a lot of IP issues here. You actively have Microsoft owning id, develop, or id Software, and id Software is who owns the copyright or owns the property for Doom. So in order to get this
this cross platform. They're not going to go just have Doom Guy on the Xbox platform. They would want to do it on both platforms. And that's just, again, a, a rights nightmare. Not bleeding likely that we're going to see Doom Guy as a guest character. Then Michael Myers, I think, is probably the most likely of this list of guests, just because we already have a horror movie theme. So why not continue with that? There's that's about as much evidence as we can give it though because guest, guest characters kind of tend to come out of left field i'm looking at you conan the barbarian jesus what the hell is that even supposed to be so 50 percent likely for michael myers and then we have full gore from killer instinct again this is a microsoft owned property uh so in order to get the rights across the board over to playstation just does not seem super likely i know they've done it in the past with god of war kratos with, with kratos in uh, the god of war franchise that was only on the playstation 2 that he guessed it uh, playstation 2 playstation 3 maybe can't remember mortal kombat 9 either way he was he was a guest character and only existed on the playstation version of that game I, I just, I really don't see that that was profitable enough for them to do it going forward. And also like they want to cast as broad of a net as possible. So to get something that is so IP or so platform specific seems incredibly unlikely. So we're gonna say 10% also for full gore. 10% likely that we'll be seeing full gore in the Mortal Kombat 1 game. And then let's move into the, the cameo characters that are being rumored with this quote unquote leak and that is Nightwolf, Kotal Kahn, Aaron Black, and Chucky or Kotal General Kotal is how the rumor labels him. Uh, so Nightwolf we're gonna again tackle these individually. Nightwolf, we have reference to Nightwolf, a passing reference at the very least, to Nightwolf in game already. That's kind of all you really need to justify the cameo situation, I believe. There's there doesn't need to be a lore reason for it because the cameos are cameos technically in the lore for the game, are cameos from other universes. So that's kind of all you really need. And I believe at this point, like there has been enough, I, would, I can't say substantiated, there has been enough data mine based rumors that seem to imply this is a possibility that we're gonna give this just a little bit over halfway. We're gonna say about 60% likely we'll be seeing Nightwolf in Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, and then as far as General Kotal goes, Kotal, as far as General Kotal goes, I, there is very little evidence that this is gonna be a thing. Yes, Kotal Khan and Jade in previous games had a relationship. He is no longer the Khan as we, you know, Molina is now the ruler for Outworld. So it would be in some sort of general situation with Outworld being a little bit more of a nice place, a little bit more earth friendly, if you will. A lore ways that seems to lend itself to this being a possibility. But again, it's a cameo. So that's a lot of work to go into justifying a cameo. There's no, there's no other real way they could work that in and have it make sense. But again, cameo, so it's still possible. We're gonna say about 30% likely that we'll find his way into Mortal Kombat 1. Aaron Black is a similar situation. I, I, I I feel like, honestly, what I have written here, I don't think is what the actual number we're going with because I think he's about as likely as Nightwolf. So we're gonna say 60% likely as Night, uh, like, like we did for Nightwolf for the exact same reasons, just because all you really need is a passing reference for it to make sense for a cameo in this game to find his way in. And then our final one is Chucky. The interesting thing here is this would be the first time we got a guest character as a cameo, also, going with that horror theme seems to lend itself that way. This one, the only reason we're not going any higher is really because of the source, because of where this is coming from and there's no other way to substantiate it. But also, I guess I could have gone a little bit higher because the implication from Ed Boon, I guess it was a couple months ago at this point when he posted that black and white picture of all the horror icons and had a question mark over Chucky's head, seems to imply the possibility exists. So I guess I could have gone a little bit higher, but we're, we're not going much higher than 50%. I'm gonna split the difference on this one. 50% seems pretty generous and a lot of the stuff that is coming out of this leak specifically. This is the second time that it's been referenced that Chucky could be a thing, but the last time was this same 
source-ish. Uh, technically, it's two different sources, but it's kind of funneled through the one place. He's just claiming it's coming from different places. Does that make sense? So yeah, 50% likely that we'll see Chucky as a cameo. I think that would be fun, especially considering how well Terra, Terra, Farah is doing in game. But yeah, then we have one last piece to this big Mortal Kombat quote unquote leak, and it is the existence of a new finisher when it comes to Combat Pack 3. They're going to be launching a new finishing move and they're going to call it a musicality. Oh, this, this really brings me back to Mortal Kombat 3 days when Mortal Kombat 3 was about to launch and all of my friends were speculating about, oh, I heard there was gonna be nudalities, or I heard there was gonna be this or that or the other thing because babalities was a thing and friendships was a thing in Mortal Kombat 2. So we were like, well, how are they gonna make that better? I think at one point in that, at that time, somebody suggested, maybe it was something I read in a magazine or something, but it was suggested that such a thing as a musicality was going to be a thing then too, which is another reason why I don't think this is gonna happen. But just the corny, like Mortal Kombat is corny. There is a lot of cheese involved with Mortal Kombat. There's definitely a lot of like borderline cringe things that they're doing as jokes in game or in universe that Mortal Kombat fans just kind of accept. And uh, I mean, I appreciate even. But uh, musicality is not the direction that they take their humor, not the kind of corn that they usually distribute in the Mortal Kombat universe. Also, the description of what a musicality is, according to this leak, is you do it and then your care the your opponent rather dances themselves to death. Literally, just feels a lot more drawn out than it seems they're going with their finishing moves. If you take a look at Takeda and you see his x-ray move, Takeda probably is the last one to launch, has the shortest x-ray in the game as far as like the length of time it takes for the animation to play out, is the shortest from start to finish out of anyone. If you look at, they're leaning a lot more into the brutalities, they're, they're giving us brutalities, very potentially giving us stage fatalities with Combat Pack 2. Like, it just seems like they're going for brevity. The, 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 the fatalities anymore take up a little bit less time as well. So to, do, to properly do something that would imply dancing one's self to death, seems like that would be a lot more of a drawn out situation. They're also trying to appeal to the professional, the, the, the fighting game community, the, the tournament fighters, if you will. And that something that is that long and drawn out just does not lend itself to that community either, the professional fighter community. So it, there's, there's just a lot working against this and just the cheesy musicality really 5%. This is another one that will honestly shock me if this comes out ever in a Mortal Kombat game. Just ever. If they ever do this, I will be, you will see me mouth agape. Like, it's just never going to happen. 5% likely it will see musicality. That is what we have for the rumor mill this week, nerds. Oh, that was a slog. I'm sorry. That brings us to the end of the video, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me for the news. Once again, there is a full and probably much more up-to-date and recent episode of the news, the full-length version, if you will, called The Week in Nerdum over on the main channel, linked down in the description and probably link popping up somewhere around my face right about now. So click on that, go check that out as well. Or if you prefer your news in more truncated pieces, then by all means, just stick around here and go check out some of the other stuff we offer on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember, nerds, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.